what is going on everyone so i think this is going to be a new series i'm going to start i think i might call it something like uh, circuit improvement projects or something like that because today what i want to do is take a look at this mosfet um, gate driver circuit that we designed for our five watt power supply and kind of understand that uh, this thing probably wouldn't work very well in real life and there are a decent amount of reasons um, for it so I'm sure you're probably uh, had imagined maybe if you haven't had much experience with components in real life that what's going on here is this is literally as simple as pulsing like a square wave and you know whenever you the drive pin is high the gate goes high and it allows the MOSFET con to conduct right it's pretty much uh, circuits 101 anyone who's seen uh, circuits on a whiteboard this is kind of how they're explained it's it's everything's in theory and that's that's just kind of how things work um, but in reality this would not this would not work at all and there are a lot of problems we well there are two major problems um, that we would have that we would, would encounter that if we did not address would lead to things like premature component failure and then it would affect the performance of our power supply because it would infect it would affect like signal integrity and it would affect um, like just the cleanness of our signal so the first thing I want to do is actually let's go take a look at these notes like I said it's not as simple as pulsing perfect square wave right we just explained that in reality we have to deal with imperfect components that's like the major reason that this problem exists is just because MOSFETs aren't perfect like who is perfect Nobody's perfect. We shouldn't expect our MOSFETs to be perfect. So actually, I want to bring up this great diagram. I think it's, it's by Toshiba. Um, let me see. Right here. Here we go. So looking at this diagram right here, this shows you a better idea of what is actually going on. I would say ignore this diode. This is not real. So these grayed out components is more like what I want you to focus on. And the reason why these are here is because the MOSFET has what is known as, um, well, I'll introduce the concept of something called, or things known as parasitic components. So they're sort of the ideal circuit elements that our, when I say ideal, I would refer to something more like fundamental, like resistors, capacitors, inductors, um, diodes, transistors, stuff like that that you like build a circuit out of whenever you draw something on a whiteboard. So there, these are components that are in, unintentionally created or formed as a result of imper imperfect MOSFET components, right? We can't get around the fact that these things exist and they actually do affect our circuit in, in a way, okay? So on our MOSFET right here, we see that we have three capacitors that are formed between different pins on our MOSFET. So we have the CGD, which is the capacitor from drain or from gate to drain. We have CGS, which is the capacitor from ground to source. And then we have CGD, which is the capacitor from uh, gate to drain. So if you look on the data sheet, um, what actually happens is there's sort of like an amalgamation right here that is sort of made. It's honestly, it's as simple as like some type of adding or subtraction that is done between CGD and CGS, which forms something known as input capacitance. And let me see if I have the, this is the data sheet. I don't know why this is not, um, right here, but input capacitance is actually mentioned on the data sheet of our, so this is the data sheet for the MOSFET that we use in that project. So here we can see the input capacitance of the MOSFET that we used is around 485 picofarads. So, Going back to this diagram, I don't know if I can find a good one here that shows uh, what it actually looks like. There's another circuit we can look at that'll explain what's going on. But um, so just know that these two together kind of form what is known as the CIS value, right? And it's what we just looked up. And there are two, well, actually, there's also another thing I want to bring up too, which is that, and we'll actually go to here. And that there's another set of parasitic components which isn't featured in that diagram. I'm not 100% sure why. I mean, there was one on the drain, but on the source, it's not. And what it is, 
is the parasitic inductance, which is pretty well, uh, what is the term, illustrated in this diagram right here. So here again, you can see those capacitors right here. So here's the CGD, here's the CGS, and here's the CDS right here. But we also have what is known as um, source inductance, and then we have drain inductance to deal with. Now, thankfully, we only have to deal with the source inductance. That's the, that, that's the only thing. The drain inductance, inductance is not something we have to worry about, at least in term, at least for the gate driver circuit, okay? So, um, so basically, what happens is there are two major problems that occur as a result of our input capacitance and our source inductance. And the first major problem that we have to deal with is that whenever the drive pin will try to drive that line high, we will get a huge current spike. So going back to this, this uh, diagram right here, is that so this drive pin it, it will drive this MOS this gate pin high and that's what allows the MOSFET to conduct so whenever this actually tries to drive the pin high those that parasitic capacitance that's in the MOSFET will cause a huge current spike and now the MOSFET is only uh, 485 picofarad so it's not really it's we're talking like uh, nanoseconds picoseconds that this thing lasts however if you're familiar with the project, you know we're driving this thing at around 105 kilohertz. So 105,000 times a second, this thing, our poor flyback controller is having to just pump out a whole bunch of current. And as a result, this can, like I said, lead to premature failure in our um, flyback controller. So this is a problem that actually needs addressing. So that's like the first major problem is that um, that we have to solve is that we're, we're, we're experiencing a huge current spike whenever we try to drive this pin high, okay? And that's a result of the parasitic capacitance. So that's a quick summary of problem one. Problem two is that we experience a ringing on the VGS signal, aka that same line that I just referred to, um, whenever we try to, whenever the, the pin will drop, goes from high to low. So whenever we try to pull that signal down, we experience, so whenever this, this uh, is high and it would try to pull it low to make the MOSFET stop conducting, we, experiencing, uh, we experience a ringing. And what do I mean by ringing is, I'll show you some wonderful pictures I pulled off the internet, is that this is what I'm talking about right here. So remember in your head, you probably were thinking like, oh, it's a perfectly smooth square wave. Everything is like, you know, it's, it's a tabletop. It's perfectly clean and beautiful, but no, we get this really ugly ringing that occurs and one of the consequences of this ringing is that if you're familiar with how a MOSFET works the MOSFET basically once the voltage at the gate passes a certain threshold we will um, start to conduct a little bit and actually that's what this term means right here we have VGS TH which is basically what it means is that at 4.5 volts the MOSFET will start conducting this is like the minimum detectable current flow that when they tested it experimentally and so at 4.5 volts, we get about 50 microamps of current. And this is like a linear, this scales linearly up to 10 volts when we get full conduction, right? We're getting like 1.25 amps of conduction. Right here. That means this, this can conduct 1.25 amps worth of current through it, uh, through from the drain to source, um, whenever, we're, whenever we're driving the gate at 10 volts. So um, what happens here is that whenever we get this ringing effect, right, whenever this is ringing, what basically is happening is the gate signal is, is say this was at 14 volts, right? So it bounces down to zero and then it goes back up to like six or seven and it goes like to five or something, right? And then it goes you know, four and then three and something like that. So there's still a brief period of time where it's partially conducting whenever we really wanted it to be low. And this can lead to something like power losses on the MOSFET and cause the MOSFET to have to dissipate, uh, you know, a lot of heat, which could lead to premature failure of the MOSFET if it just has uh, repeated stress and fatigue from heat, from heat dissipation on it over a long period of time. Remember, this is happening 105,000 times a second. And another thing is this ringing. Say your your signal, say these, say this signal tried to start like right here or something like that. It would be affected by the ringing. It could lead to a compounding effect 
where it threw off your your entire signal was just really messed up and you could lead to actually damaging your mosfet if you drove it over the maximum uh vg level um so like if you could easily drive it over 30 volts if it if it if that signal compounds even a little bit we're doing it 105,000 times a second so even if we're a few millivolts over as a result of this ringing each each pulse then we're getting there in a matter of no time um, here i just have another signal that is uh, showing the ringing right here so this yellow line is the vgs signal whenever it drops down it has some ringing right here that we see um, so this is just another way another way to look at it so um, i want to go in a little deeper and explain why exactly we experience the ringing because it might not be very obvious by looking at this and to be honest it's not obvious to me whenever we look at it um, and luckily ti puts another diagram down a little bit lower that explains so remember that those elements we have remember we had the input capacitance and then we have the source inductance that we have to deal with and those are what's causing the ringing and the reason why is because the input capacitance and the source inductance form an inductor capacitor circuit in series and maybe this should probably look very familiar if you've taken like an intro to circuits class because this is just a typical lc circuit and know that in a perfect environment this would ring on forever basically this would would resonate if it wasn't damped by the resistance right um, so that is basically the cause of the ringing, and that's the major problem, too, that we have to solve. So with that, um, I think I'm going to go on. That's, I think that's where I'll end this video because I think it's a good spot to start to, good spot to stop. We clearly have the problem defined, and we have it well understood, I think. And in the next video or videos, I'm going to talk about the solutions that we have for this problem. So how do you think we're going to end up solving the ringing problem and the in rush current problem.